John Sawat used to call the monastery our quiet corner here. The world, as he said, is it's always in a turmoil, one way or another. And to find our sanity, we need to find a quiet corner. Now this, of course, is a, an analogy for the mind itself. As the Buddha once said, in his teaching, the word world simply refers to the world of the senses. What is there in this world? There's the eye, and then there are forms. There are the ear, there are the ears, and there are sounds, nose, and aromas, tongue, flavors, body, tactile sensations, mind, and ideas. That's the world. In other words, you never, the Buddha never deals with the question of whether there's something behind our experience. Is there a real world out there that's making contact with us? Is there no world out there? Are these experiences just things floating around? He doesn't deal with that issue. He has us look directly at the world of our experience and focuses on the big problem in the world of experience, which is suffering. Now, to deal with the suffering in this world we have here, we need to find a quiet corner. That's what we try to create as we meditate. Some spot in the mind where we're just observing things. We try to make that spot as solid and as imperturbable as possible, so that when things come up in the body, things come up in the world of the senses, we can simply watch. We don't have to get carried along with the currents of the world. It's like standing on the, the bank of a river. The river may flow, but we don't have to flow along with the river. So we need this outside place to have a quiet corner away from the general concerns of the, the world of human beings. So we can take a good look at our mind and see if we can find a quiet corner in there. So you can, then you can deal with the world of what's going on in the breath, with the world of what's going on in the body, in your sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, the whole schmear. So you can see things for what they are. So find a spot in the body that's comfortable, a spot where you can watch the breath, and learn how to stay there in the midst of all the other things that are happening. And we can't wait for everything in the world to settle down and be good before we can settle down and be good. We've, we've got to find the place to settle down for ourselves. We have to create this corner and have to learn how to protect it, learn how to have a sense of its preciousness, have respect for it. To so find a spot where you can be with the breath and then just learn how to stay there. And nothing much may seem to be happening, but. That's fortunate. You can learn how to stay there in the midst of relative calm, and then eventually work up, learn how to walk and maintain a sense of a still center, learn how to talk and maintain a sense of the still center. And it's just simply watching, your, watching yourself talk. So you can see the process clearly and do it more skillfully. That's the value of the center. And then bit by bit you can learn how to maintain this center in lots of other activities, even in the midst of an argument with somebody else, even in the midst of difficult situations. If you can maintain this still center, you've got the advantage. 
to know that things are relatively quiet around you, learn how to find a place where you can stay inside. Create your own quiet corner. And then watch over it. This requires mindfulness, the ability to keep remembering that this is something you want to work on, and alertness to watch to see what's actually happening, to notice when you're beginning to slip off and come right back. And then there's a the quality of ardency, which means you really pay attention to this. You have a sense, as I said, of the, the preciousness of this quiet corner. You respect it. You don't toss it away from the whatever else comes up in the mind. No matter how compelling, no matter how important it may seem, right now nothing else is more important than maintaining a sense of just the being of the observer. Just watching the breath, having a sense of being standing established in the breath. And then when you leave here, try to make Make an effort to maintain this center so that you can have a quiet corner wherever you are. All of the skills we learn in meditation are meant to be used in all situations. Learning how to make the breath comfortable is a useful skill to have. You find that when anger arises in the mind, it's going to have an effect on the breath. When fear arises, when lust arises, it's going to have an effect on the breath. If you know how to gain a sense of how to adjust your breathing, breathe through whatever tension or tightness or constriction comes up around these emotions, that helps to weaken their hold. And at the same time, learning how to gain a sense of how the breath energy in the body can feel comfortable, how it can feel refreshing. Makes the mind less hungry for other kinds of pleasure. This changes the balance of power in the mind. If you're feeling tired and frazzled, it's very easy to just jump for whatever sensual pleasure offers itself. But if you've got a sense of well-being and you know how to tap into that whenever you need it, And when other pleasures come along, it's a lot easier to say no, especially if they involve unskillful attitudes in order to maintain them or to attain them. You realize, I don't have to go there. It's not worth it. You've got something better. So the skills you learn on the cushion, the skills you learn while you're sitting here with your legs crossed and your eyes closed, are not just for this position. They're not just for this place. They're meant to be taken with you wherever you go. It's like learning a musical instrument. You practice in the practice room where it's quiet, where you have a minimum of distractions. But that's not because you want to play the instrument only in the practice room. You play it in the practice room so you can begin to get a sense of Your technique work. You can fo focus your attention fully on what you're doing. And then the next step is learning how to develop the same techniques, use the same techniques, have that same kind of focus in more and more difficult situations. People are listening. People are watching. More and more people. Ultimately, you want to get so you can play in any situation, no matter how much pressure there may be on you, no matter how many people are around you. You want to be able to develop that same focus. So while you're here in the quiet corner, learn how to appreciate the opportunity you've got to focus on this quiet corner inside. And it's not the case, of course, that while you hear those going to be no distractions at all. There'll be distractions in terms of thoughts of the past and the future, sometimes strange feelings coming up in the body.
but try to have a sense of at least there being one spot in your awareness where you can take a stance. That's your quiet corner. And as the rest of what's going on in the body and the mind, just, there are times when you just have to let it run its course. And you hang on right here. Other times you can take the sense of ease, the sense of stillness here, and begin to spread it out throughout the whole body. And the body responds. The mind responds. But even in cases where you can't do that, always hang on to your quiet corner, your quiet spot. Because you find as you maintain that in different situations that it is really can be a refuge. It gives you a good solid basis from which to decide what to do, what to say, what to think in any situation. And even if you can't think of what to do or what to say, well, maybe it's just good to be quiet and keep watching. We've got a place to be quiet and keep watching, to learn how to develop this place, make it strong, and then try to carry it into all of your other activities. And that's when you see the difference between being in the world with a refuge and being in the world without a refuge. The Buddha once said that the self is its own refuge. Well, you have to develop qualities inside yourself in order to be a refuge, and this is one of the really important ones. <laughs>